Coming up on Before You Buy, it's a heroic suite of products. We have a Titan, we have the One, and Samsung's Return to the Galaxy tab. It's Before You Buy, coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Ford, featuring voice activated sync app link. Now you can control select smartphone apps with your voice, helping keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Learn more about the technologies Ford is bringing to its vehicles at Ford.com slash technology. Welcome to Before You Buy. I'm Tom Merritt filling in for Leo Laporte, who's off in Norway looking at the pretty lights, taking some pictures for Twit Photo. They'll be doing, putting together a special edition of that. But in the meantime, we have some great products to tell you whether you should buy, try, or not buy, starting with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2. This is the next version of the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Eileen Rivera took it for a spin. She knows all about Android. Let's find out what she thought next. Hey everyone, Eileen Rivera here with Twit.tv and Before You Buy, and I have another Android device today. This time I have the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 7.0. It's a 7-inch tablet, and uh, the, the biggest change with this tablet is that it is the first Samsung tablet to ship with Ice Cream Sandwich. That is the latest operating system from Android, Android 4.0. And besides that, uh, there's a lot of other really cool things about this fabulous device. A little hint for my decision. Uh, let me uh, walk you through the guts of this. Now this does have ice cream sandwich. It's not quite vanilla. It's Samsung Touch Wiz ice cream sandwich. So this is what it looks like coming out of the box. You'll see some of these widgets and some of these uh, Samsung apps. Uh, now like the Tab 7.7 .7 that I reviewed a while back, it also has this little mini drawer that you can um, customize. For instance, as I did with that review, uh, out of the box you can tap on the music player and play some music. Is that the, oh, is that the only music that I have in here? <laughs> well, you get what I mean. Now, as I mentioned, this device is running the latest operating system, Ice Cream Sandwich, Android 4.0.3. And what that really means is that um, you get a, a couple of cool features, like a new task manager here, where you can delete or close apps like that with a swipe of your finger. Uh, it's also very, it's much more responsive it's a little speedier on the uptake. And you actually have some more access uh, to various apps. Um, for instance, the uh, Chrome Beta uh, app, which you can only get on Ice Cream Sandwich. Some apps like that are only exclusive to this operating system. All right, well, besides that, um, Ice Cream Sandwich, again, 7 inches. This is uh, 1024 by uh, 600 pixels. It also has a PLS display. And what that means, it's um, Samsung's version uh, or, or their definition of being able to look at the tablet on many angles and still be able to see the screen uh, clearly. When I move the tablet, um, left or right uh, at an angle. I can still see the pictures and the, and the text pretty clearly. Uh, it's a, actually a really gorgeous display. Not super AMOLED like the Samsung 7.7, .7, but uh, pretty decent. What do you think, sweetheart? That's cool, most of the time. It has a 1 gigahertz dual core OMAP 4430 CPU and has a 1 gig of RAM and 8 gigabytes of internal storage, but uh, there is a micro SD slot which makes this device expandable up to 32 gigs. Speakers with some decent sound here. It does have a proprietary cable for power, uh, as does a lot of the Samsung devices. Um, and then you've got your uh, volume rocker power button, headphone jack. Now it does have a three megapixel camera. It's uh, not very great. The pictures are kind of grainy. Um, they kind of skimped out on the camera. And then uh, no megapixels, just a VGA front camera, but you could still do some video conferencing and, and whatnot with this device. It does record in 720p, but um, again, the quality is kind of grainy. Overall, uh, 
does all the functions that you would expect on a Android tablet and a little more. Now for the pros, the price, $250, bargain. Uh, ice cream sandwich uh, on this device, right out of the box. Again, another plus. Um, and the speed, the device actually um, is pretty snappy on all fronts, all apps. Cons, the camera, I mean, three megapixel camera, supposed to be 720p recording, that may not be a make or break, but really, I had a hard time finding fault with this device, and uh, that was it. Uh, so, uh, in closing, great device out of the box, had a really nice experience, and very surprised to have a good experience with um, the latest uh, tab from Samsung. Uh, I have to say, I've been very excited uh, by using it. I have actually started using this uh, device and um, uh, putting it in my Kindle Fire cover, believe it or not. It fits in perfectly. And if you're looking for an affordable Android tablet out right now, this might be the one for you. Um, you know, I do hesitate because Google is supposedly coming out with their own tablet pretty soon, uh, another affordable one. But if you want one now and you're a fan of the seven inch tablet form factor like I am, this is a definite buy. I'm Eileen Rivera with twit.tv and before you buy. Let me tell you, she really did like that tab. And you know what? Uh, if you've got her relations, you probably don't need to take pictures, at least of her husband. Next up, the HTC Titan 2. Tony Wang took this Windows phone and its 16 megapixel camera out for a walk. He tells us what he thought. I'm Tony from Twit, and today I'm reviewing the HTC Titan 2 for AT&T. Um, it's one of their newer Windows phone that came out the same time, the same day as the Lumia 900. So we'll see how this fares with the Lumia 900. So here's the HTC Titan 2. Uh, as you can see, we got one of the biggest uh, display for cell phone out there right now. I got 4.7 inch. Uh, it is a super LCD, not a AMOLED. The display is actually relatively low resolution and that's mainly because of uh, Microsoft's uh, their limitation on their hardware. So this is only um, 800 by 480 and it's a super LCD display at 4.7 inch. And I actually have a Samsung Focus S here. And we can take a look at the display. This is a regular size uh, 4.3 inch AMOLED display. Same resolution, but much smaller. So just like all the other uh, Windows phone out there, uh, different manufacturers have their own different special customized apps. So you can see here, HTC has their own hub. One of the biggest selling point of the phone is the 4.7 inch display. And the other one is on the back of the phone is the 16 megapixel camera. Now this camera has um, aperture of 2.6 and it does really well in most conditions. Um, so the biggest issue with the camera is that the manual settings is actually the best way to go when you're taking a picture. So you always want to set your own ISO, your own um, white balance, and the contrast, saturation, and sharpness you can fix in post. And the best part about Windows Phone and their uh, camera app is that you can always save your settings. And um, that's not something that you can do with other phones. So one of the things I want to point out is that the 16 megapixel camera um, takes very large photos and we're looking at five or six megabytes per image and an issue with that is that the only way to get a full resolution image off the phone wirelessly is using SkyDrive and you have to upload it manually and you will run into issues like this where you get this really really vibrant picture and it's got a lot of details and you get a error message says we can't add the file because the file is too big. Now, keep in mind that I already got the newest SkyDrive after they offer the free 25 gigabyte storage. So this is the newest SkyDrive and I still can't upload large images. But, but you can see, um, you can see that some of the images I've taken, like this macro shot here, is just small enough that I can upload it. and the camera does really well, but you just have to keep everything manual. You can't leave it on auto and 
expect to take good pictures from it. Pros of the HTC Titan 2, uh, it's very well built um, like most HTC phones and you have a gorgeous display, one of the largest one out there for Windows Phone right now and you have a very good camera at 16 megapixel with dual LED. Um, and it's relatively affordable, I mean 199 is pretty much the uh, standard price for a smartphone at the moment. And I really like the lip um, that they have on this phone. It's kind of curved. Fits in your hand really well. Yeah. Con on the phone, um, the design is very outdated. This is an older design from HTC from 2010, 2011. And you can see that the design is old if you compare this to the One X or the One S. And this little piece back here is actually the phone's antenna. So if you just take that off, it turns the phone off because there's a circuit back here that completes the circuit. Buy, try, or don't buy is definitely a buy for me. It's probably the best Windows phone out there right now. If you can't wait for Apollo, this is the Mango phone for you. It's got the biggest display, the best camera, and for the price, you can't really beat this phone. So I'm Tony for Twid, and this is the HTC Titan 2. And like the design, huh? I guess it is a little bit dated. It didn't bother me that much, but there you go. Thank you, Tony Wang. And now we're going to take a quick break and thank our sponsor. And through the magic of the internet, Leo is back. Tell us about Ford, Leo. More with Tom Meriden before you buy coming up. But right now I want to talk to you about Ford. I, you know, they let me do the talking because I drive a Ford, a 2010 Ford Mustang, and I love it. But what I especially love, I mean, it's a classic car, great muscle car. I love how, I mean, it's fun to drive. It's got a great classic looking interior. But what's great is I'm here I am in this, in this you know, classic car, but it's 21st century technology. I've got Ford Sync in here. And I tell you, this is why I like Ford Sync. You, it's safe. It's safe. You're not distracted when you're doing things that you want to do, like change the station, change the channel, play different songs, call somebody, get directions, even get things like prices, gas prices, movie times, horoscopes, all of that, all of that without taking your hands off your wheel or your eyes off the road. And that makes you a much better driver. I think all cars should have something like this. I really do. And if you've got a teenager, get them a Ford because they can listen to tweets with OpenBeak. Oh, I, this is this Sync app link. See, OpenBeak isn't built into Sync, but there's a way now for app developers. There's an API called AppLink that lets app developers develop apps for your smartphone, Windows, Android, uh, uh, what did I leave out? An Windows, Android, iPhone. Oh, yeah, the iPhone. And uh, it just works with Sync. You talk to your phone. All uh, Sync vehicles have a USB port so you can connect your uh, cable or you can use Bluetooth. And then let's say you're doing Pandora. You've got Pandora on your phone. You obviously have to have it on your phone. It's, it's AppLink enabled. You press the button on your steering wheel and you say, Pandora, play my Rolling Stone station. And it does. You can do thumbs up, thumbs down, next, all of that stuff. Anything you can do on the phone with your voice and app link. Ford has a mobile developers network to encourage developers to develop more apps. And they've got a bunch of new ones already. iHeartRadio lets you listen to radio stations everywhere in the country on your, on your phone through your Ford. Uh, NPR, so you get the latest breaking news. You can play your favorite NPR programs. Sync Destinations gives you access to uh, navigation and directions through compatible smartphones. All of them, this stuff is great. So here's the deal. Go to your Ford dealer, say, I want to test drive a Ford, but here's the, here's the catch. I've got my smartphone here. I want to try out AppLink. Set me up. I want to try that out. And they will show you. They'll do the whole thing. Or find out more online, too, at Ford.com slash technology. I'll tell you, I don't know of other car companies that have an API <laughs> to their car computer. This is cool. That's why I love Ford. Ford.com slash technology. And now back we go to before you buy, Tom. Hey, thanks, Leo. I, I should probably take these, uh, these headphones out of my ears. You know, Chad Johnson reviews these because they're a little bit pricey. He'll tell us whether they're worth it. And the Palm Folio. Oh, wait, no, this is the HP Folio. It's actually spelled with an I. I, as Actar, took a look at this one. Both of them coming up now. I'm Ayaz Actar with Twit, and this is the HP Folio 13. This is one of HP's Ultrabooks. Let's take a quick look around. We've got a power port, gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, USB 3.0 slot, and an SD card slot, some indicator lights. 
Of course, there's no optical drive here because this is an Ultrabook. And on the other side, USB port and a headphone microphone combo port. Let's open this thing up. Since this is the Folio 13, guess what? It's got a 13 inch display. Now you can see from the front, there's a whole lot of bezel going around here. Looks like HP probably could have crammed a larger display. Also the resolution, 1366 by 768, which is pretty decent for this kind of class of notebook. But we've seen for the Asus UX31, their Zenbook had a resolution of 1600 by 900. So I would have liked to see that a little higher. Move down to here, we have a speaker grill. See how this says Dolby Advanced Audio? This is incredibly loud. It is probably the loudest speakers I've ever heard on an Ultrabook. And the best thing is, it didn't distort at really high volume. So I was quite impressed with this. The bass response isn't great, but then again, you get some really loud audio out of this thing. Moving on to the keyboard, we have a soft finish on this chiclet keyboard, and the travel was really good. I mean, it was very comfortable to type on, and one of the best things about the keyboard, you don't notice it. If you don't notice it, that means they're doing their job right. This is also backlit. Moving to the trackpad, probably the best trackpad I've tried out on an Ultrabook so far. It handled multi-touch gestures, clicked fine, I could drag, I could do everything I wanted to right on this thing without any complaints. On the insides, there's a sticker you can clearly see. It's got an Intel Core i5 with Windows 7. So what does that mean? That means this thing was quite snappy. It also has 128 gigabyte SSD. If you take a look over here on the screen, you can see that there's a recovery partition. So you lose about 20 gigabytes to that. So you have about 100 gigabytes for your own usage. But because it's got the SSD and the Core i5 and it's an Ultrabook, watch it start up again. Resumes really fast. I gotta say, you open it up, it's ready to go and it's ready to work. So I'm really impressed with that. Now HP claims you can get nine and a quarter hours of battery life out of this device. I don't know if that's really true because when I tried it with my crazy tests and my crazy tests involved full volume, full brightness, testing it out with, with streaming video and streaming audio, thing lasted about three and a half hours. So if you're gonna be more judicious, you probably get five to six hours of battery life out of this because you know, you'd lower the brightness a little bit and odds are you're not gonna be blasting video and audio out of this all the time because this is quite a capable machine. For the pros, the build quality is sturdy. It's lightweight. The keyboard and trackpad are very good. Always like the fact that it's got an SD card slot, USB 3.0, and the speakers, again, a standout. Loud and clear, doesn't distort. As for cons, it's not a whole lot. Maybe the display resolution could be higher, but that's pretty much it. At $900, this Ultrabook, this HP Folio 13, is definitely a buy. It's probably very capable for most real world scenarios. I gotta say, I was quite impressed by the HP Folio 13. I'm Aya Zaktar with Twit. Hi, my name is Chad Johnson. I am with Twit and Before You Buy, and I'm reviewing the EHS 71 stereo headset uh, by Samsung. This comes in at $130. Uh, first, let's start off this review with a quick look at the hardware. Um, all of these uh, metal pieces are made out of aluminum, uh, aluminum excluding the uh, microphone uh, and uh, toggle button here, which uh, depresses quite nicely, and I really enjoyed that. The microphone is okay quality. Um, and the cord has been wrapped uh, so that uh, to avoid tangling, uh, which is nice. Um, and the uh, headphone tips here are made out of a nice squishy material uh, that fits inside your ear really nicely and is comfortable for uh, long periods of time. These also uh, come off so you can change sizes. Um, inside the box there are uh, small, medium, and large sizes. Um, and also you get a carrying case uh, when uh, you buy these headphones. Now, of course, we are buying uh, very expensive headphones, so we want to know about sound quality. Um, personally, I did not find the sound quality all that amazing. Um, basses, the you know, bass line, it wasn't very punchy. Um, I didn't get any real character out of uh, my music, and uh, just details in the highs and the lows just weren't there. Whenever I turned up the music really, really loud, um, uh, I would get distortion, and uh, that's something that you really don't want in a premium uh, style headphone. Uh, especially one that costs uh, $130. So let's get into the pros and cons of this headset. Uh, pros would be that they're comfortable and I could leave them in for long stretches of time. Uh, great build quality. The uh, aircraft aluminum was really nice. Uh, they were also stylish uh, without being too gaudy. So I really like that as well. The cons would be the sound quality. For a really high-end uh, set of headphones, sound quality just really wasn't that great. That was disappointing, and also the price coming in at $130. So, uh, buy, try, don't buy for the EHS 71 stereo headset. I'm gonna say don't buy. 
Uh, this has been Chad Johnson with Twit and Before You Buy. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks, Ayaz and Chad. You know, for full reviews of all of these products, don't forget our YouTube channels out there, youtube.com slash twit. Look for that Before You Buy section, and you can get the full versions if you want more details. Next up, Jason Howell also knows all about Android. And I don't mind telling you, he seemed a little smitten with the HTC One S. He'll tell you why next. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Howell, and I'm here with the HTC One S. This is one of many phones being released on HTC's One line. This in particular will be on T-Mobile's HSPA Plus network. It's $199 on a two-year contract, $599 without. Let's take a look at the specs. It's a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor. It has a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED display with QHD Pentile technology. It has ice cream sandwich. It's 4.0.3 and it's also running HTC's Sense 4 overlay. It has an 8 megapixel rear facing camera, VGA quality front facing camera, and actually this is capable of recording 1080p HD video as well. It has 16 gigs of internal storage, 1 gig of RAM. It does not have an SD card slot. There's a non removable 1650 milliamp hour lithium ion battery inside. And as well, it does not have HDMI or NFC, which is kind of a bummer. But let's take a look at the design. First of all, it's extremely thin and light. It's the thing that strikes you the moment you pick up this phone. It has a gray anodized aluminum unibody design. The overall stylings make this phone feel very expensive in your hand. Now let's take a look at the display. It's a QHD pentile screen. And right off the top, I have to say that my eyes see that immediately. So it was kind of hard for me to unsee it. However, a lot of people aren't sensitive to that. So I would say go to T-Mobile store and pick it up and use it for a few minutes to see if that pentile screen really screams out at you. Uh, the display is considerably bright indoors. I had a little bit of outdoor visibility issues with it, but overall, not many complaints there. Now onto performance, it's very snappy. Um, there was very little lag at all throughout using this device, and that's including HTC's Sense 4. Everything's just super quick on here and super responsive thanks to the Snapdragon S4 processor. Now let's take a look at the camera. The rear-facing camera is awesome. Picture quality is actually very, very good, and it's improved more in pictures that you take in like bright daylight. The front-facing camera on the front, of course, it's VGA quality, so you shouldn't expect a whole lot. And the 1080p video recording is fantastic. They actually have a dual mode video recorder in here so that when you're running in video, you can still take pictures. And that's a nice feature. Now let's look at calling. Uh, calls were very clear and loud. And actually this phone differentiates itself in the sense that it supports Wi-Fi calling. So I had a couple of calls where the person on the other end couldn't actually hear me and I wasn't sure if that was the Wi-Fi calling feature or if it was just some strange glitch. I also heard little clicks and pops through most of my Wi-Fi calls. So I'd say it's a nice feature to have in a pinch, but I wouldn't rely on it all the time. Now storage, I told you there's no SD card slot in here and you are locked in at 16 gigs of internal storage. If that's not enough for you, this could be a serious downside on the phone. Having said that, HTC has a deal with Dropbox. So you get two years of cloud storage through Dropbox with 25 gigs of storage space there. So maybe that's a good alternative for you. As for the battery, I said it's non-removable. It's under here and you can't take it out. Uh, but I had really good battery life. I'm talking probably 15, 16 hours, multiple days with plenty of battery left over when I plugged it in at night. And that's all on T-Mobile's HSPA Plus network. I was very impressed by the battery performance of this phone. And finally, I wanna spend a few moments talking about Sense. HTC has redesigned Sense up to version four. Not sure if it's Sense 4 or this device, but Sense has never felt smoother and lighter. Everything feels super snappy. The camera app is superb. I really enjoyed using the camera app and wanted to turn on the phone just to take pictures because the app was so much fun to play with. Sense's multitasking screen is much less usable than the one on Ice Cream Sandwich because the screens take up the, almost the full entire screen, so it's really hard to get a true sense of all the apps that you have open at any given time. It really slows you down. Overall, it's better than previous versions of Sense, but I wouldn't necessarily say that I'd opt for this over vanilla. All right, so let's take a look at the pros of the device. It has an expensive look and feel that make you proud to use the phone. The camera app and picture quality inspire more photos. And the phone as a whole feels super quick. 
and that's including Sense 4.0. Now the cons, it has a non-removable battery, 16 gigs of storage with no SD card slot might be too little for some. And lastly, the display is iffy for those sensitive to pentile displays. Overall, I'm pretty sad to see this review end because I really enjoyed using the phone and I'd say that probably means that I would recommend that you buy the HTC One S. I'm Jason Howell with Twit and you can find my other reviews on another show I do all about Android at twit.tv slash AAA. Otherwise, thank you for watching my review of the HTC One S. Thanks, Jason. You know, the Apple people are like, non-removable battery? Yeah, we've been dealing with that for half a decade. We don't care. Uh, but they're probably not going to switch either. So thanks for that. And uh, don't forget, you can find all of our episodes on the web, twit.tv slash BYB. Think of it as bring your beer. BYB, it's easy to remember. Before you buy at twit.tv, send us an email. And you can follow us on Twitter and find out when we put new reviews up. Go to BYB Reviews and check it out. Leo Laporte will be back next time. Till then. Try before you buy.